once again, folks. And it's the end of the year. We've got another cracking show and a jam packed. We got Dear Santa. We've got the Anglo Saxons. We got a chance for you to try puppet building. But to start off the show, we're going all the way over to Dudley for our year four trip to the Black Country Living Museum. These are some of the pupils from year four at Starbank Road as they tour the museum. If you've never been, you have to check it out. It was awesome. This is I Saw TV. This is Feature One. Have a watch, have a listen as we go on our tour. tour. This, this is Year 4 and welcome to the Black Country Museum. It's called the Black Country because of that stuff. Does anybody know what that is? Coal. 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 Right. So we got coal. If you dig down anywhere in the Black Country, you'll find loads of this stuff. What do we use it for? Fire. fire. Yeah, we can set it on fire and it'll burn and it'll give us heat. Now we can use that in our homes to keep us warm and you'll see fires down in the houses down in the village. But what else will you see? You'll see it being used to work machines. When you burn coal, you get heat. But what else do you get? It's not st smoke, yeah. Trouble is then all the smoke goes up in the air and then it comes back down and smoke and the dust and the ash covers everything and makes it what colour? Black. Black. black and that's why it's called the black country. There's white clay walls and it's not very big. So I'm going to start with a question. Do we reckon that this was a poor or wealthy house? Poor. poor. Yeah. She moved here with four of her nine children. Yeah, the others were old enough to look after themselves when she moved in here. Toilets were outside, and that goes for even posh houses in the early 1900s, which is when this was. In fact, it was built in the late 1800s. They had a really small range, which is where they cooked all their food. There was no fancy parlour for grandparents or nothing like that, yeah? Of an evening, they did have a gazunda to go under the bed, which is where they'd go to the toilet of an evening, yeah. The place we just came out of was really, like, disgusting because the bedroom where you had to pee was really bad. You had to pee in the bedrooms. There was this bowl where you had to pee and you, and you, could get, and you couldn't get any privacy at all. The bowl is called a gazunda. What a strange name. Let's carry on. Let's go. Come on, come on, we're after the shops next. Let's go! As you go around the museum, you will be going through different periods of time. So we're traveling. Yeah. We're traveling. Yes, that you are. On this street, you're in the 1930s. You go into that street over there, you go into the 1950s. You go into the main village down there, you go into the 1910s. As I say, you'd be earning two pounds a week if you're working class, but this certainly isn't a shop for the working class. What's the most expensive clothing here? As I said, a tailor-made suit. I say seventeen pounds for it to be fully tailor made for you. In today's money, the equivalent of seventeen pounds is one thousand pounds. That outfit there, mm -hmm. does that remind you of? Do you think like the book we're reading? Oh, How much have you just saved? They buy an each week. Two pounds. I think if you had to save up to eighteen, how many weeks would you need to save up for? Eight, nine, nine. nine. You'd have to say nine weeks to buy that motorcycle. Shan, that's your choice. Oh. Which one? That's my favourite. Now I can see that in your living room, can you? No. You can't, why? Because we've travelled time back to the back. 
from? Well, when are you from then? We're from 2023. You're joking. So, does anybody know what the price of that is? Oh. Ten shillings. It's ten guineas. A guinea is a pound and a shilling. And do you know what they still buy with guineas? Horses. They still buy horses with guineas. How much is this one? <coughs> That's brilliant. Uh, related to the shop, what do we have set up at our school? Uh, we have a radio TV. It's called uh, Rocket Radio. Rocket Radio? Yeah. Wow, that sounds good, doesn't it? We've got KB Radio up there. The kids all present on their radio stations. Oh, so really? who, who would have been presenting on these radio stations? Everybody. Most of the BBC, if you've got a nice posh accent. If you come from the black country, they wouldn't want you because your accent wouldn't be very... You've got to be able to speak the Queen's English. Yeah, so if you listen to old recordings, kids, everybody's very posh. Well, we know next time you actually go onto your radio stations, say, but this is the way they used to do it in the old days, and do it really posh, okay? Don't do it black country, because if you did, at the end of it, you'd have to say, ta da a bit. All right, now, first of all, right, if anything's really good, what is it? It's Boston. 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 When you, say, when you leave a building, you always say, you don't say goodbye, you say, ta da a bit. ta da a bit. ta da a bit. Which means goodbye. Right. When you can't go to the toilet outside, you have to use a potty. And in the black country, it is called a gazonda. A gazonda. Do you know why it's called a gazonda? Because it goes under the bed. That's why it's called a gazonda. Now, you probably wouldn't have been run over by cars years ago because there weren't any. What did we used to go around, travel around with? Horses. Horses. So, a, an expression in the black country is keep out the os road. Can you say that? Keep out the os road. Keep out the os road. Okay, that means if you see the horse, get out of its way. All right. Right, how am you kids? How bist? How bist? How are you, that means. Morning. I'm Boston. How am you? Boston. Boston. Excellent. All right. Keep out the off road when you go out. Make sure the off star run you over. All right. Ta-da, bit. Ta-da, bit, Ta bit, kids. Ta-da, Ta bit. Ta-da. Ooh, how exciting. This is iStar TV. And you just watched the first part. How about your Air Force trip to the Black Country Living Museum? It's so cool. Part 2 is coming up later in the show. Ooh, next, it's getting Christmassy. Let's go to Hummel Road for some puppet building with the Hippodrome and Sophie Handy. See if you can learn the skills to build your own puppets. This is iStar TV and this is Feature 2. Hi, my name's Sophie and I'm working for Pippodrome today and we've been making some Dear Santa inspired pop-up puppets with Year One and they've been designing their own but this is uh, a little example that I've made. So they've been making presents and Christmas trees to go on the front and then various presents that pop up inside like this. And the children have done all their own designs, so they've done some really nice different things but these were some examples that I made. Um, so we've just come out of the workshop. The children have made some amazing designs. So here's how we got on in the session. Uh, we, I'm making a rainbow present. Wow. A rainbow one. And who's the rainbow present for? Uh, it's going to be for... It's going to be for you. Oh, that's so kind of you. Wow, that's so nice. And what's going to be inside the rainbow present? Uh, it's going to be a doll. It's going to be a? Doll. Wow, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Thank you so much. This one. This is a doll for a present. That's so nice. And what's the other one? A pig. It's got packaging inside. It's the packaging for the doll. Ooh, that, what's the name of your doll? Mm, I'm going to name it Layla. That's a great name. I'm going to name mine uh, Elsa. Elsa and Layla? Yeah. Is that a new Frozen? Yes. Yours <laughs> gonna be later, my kid. Yeah. So good. 
Oh wow, look what you guys have created already. Amazing. Amazing. Can you can you show us what you've created and tell us about it? Maybe. What have you created? Maybe. It looks so nice. Could you show us to the camera? Oh wow, that looks incredible. And what's your design? Can you talk us through your design? What have you got on your Christmas tree? What have you put on there? I've got hearts and then got flower and stars. And we've got another incredible Christmas tree. Wow. Can you help me please? Yeah, sure. What do you need help with? Help you want to stick that on? Where are you going to stick it? Yes, I can draw a Santa. You want to stick it on the outside of there? No, I won't. I'll leave those attached. Or oh, these left-handed scissors. Will you go on holiday somewhere? Where would you like to go on holiday? Yeah. So like on your aeroplane now, you'll be able to fly all your family and all of us to Pakistan as well. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> is that going to fit? That is. That's a good size. Check out my design. Meow. We put a bell inside so you can hear it shake, so it, you can hear it jingle, like jingle bells. Dear Santa, can I please get a light up yo yo? Elsa John. I like Elsa, I watch her for movies. I made a Christmas tree. Elsa's on top of the tree. Dear Santa, can I have two things, please? Drum and a trumpet. Look who's inside my cup. Pikachu, Pika Pika Pika. Please can I have a Christmas tree and a fairy and a present and candies. Mm. Please, Kanta, can I have a kite just like this one? We'll fly in the garden or in the park. Let's go fly a kite up to the Wow, we got some great designs, everybody. some super popping building. I think I might have a go too. Do you fancy having a toy at home? Well you can try those style puppets, the pop-up puppets, or you can try this style. In the next feature, with Charlie from Starbank World, it's a different style puppet, and a bonus bit, we've got some Christmas doorways, some really fancy entrances to the classrooms, with festive fun. Here's the feature. Charlie and the puppets. And, and Christmas classroom doorways. Here we go. Hello everybody, it's me, Charlie, the learning and participation artist from Birmingham Hippodrome that comes to Starbank School, Starbank Road. You might remember me from the summer episode of Starbank TV. Now in that episode, we had a little chat about puppets. Some of the students here have been asking me about puppets. And as you, some of you know, I do also make puppets as well. And I've got a little friend here. Oh, <gasps> who's this? Don't be shy. Come on, out you come. <gasps> out you come. So, 
This is a puppet that I made recently for a project, actually for the Hippodrome for a different school, where we did Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And he is simply made out of paper and masking tape. And I'm just gonna show you the back here as well and chopsticks as well. So this is nothing fancy at all. This is literally things that I found about the home. And then I went to Poundland and I got some clothes for him. But as you can see, his arms as well, he's gonna give you a little wave now. Say hello, Augustus, uh, is literally paper and masking tape as well. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to make a simple puppet that you can make at home as well. So go on, give them another wave, Augustus. Oh, he's off. I think he wants something to eat. Ooh, he's a hungry boy. Right, Augustus, you stay there. We are now gonna make a puppet. So, as I said, I love to do things without spending any money. So we're gonna start with a Tesco's magazine. As you can see, where is it? It said it was free. Yeah, it's free. I didn't pay for it. So, you can simply take a page. We can do this with any paper that you can find. So maybe you might have something in your recycling. And I also like to use masking tape. Again, this is something you can get in Poundland. And the reason that I like to use masking tape is you can just tear it so you don't even need scissors. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get this piece of paper here and I am gonna roll it, okay? Simply rolled it into a tube and I'm gonna pinch it together. And this is gonna be the base of our puppet's head. Okay, so this is gonna be its face. And you don't need to worry about it being perfect because all of its imperfections are gonna tell you a little bit about its personality. So now I'm gonna take this next bit of paper, roll it into the next tube, okay? Gonna give it a little twist in the middle there. And this is gonna be its arms. So I'm just gonna stick that on again, a bit of masking tape. There we go. And then if you want to, you can also kind of tape in the middle here to give it bends in the elbow, but we'll leave that for now. So I'm gonna get another piece of paper. I've also got tin foil here. So if you can't find any strong paper, you could ask at home if you could use some tin foil. And what I'm gonna do, wrap it into a tube again, bring this together and this is gonna be the body. So it's really simple. We're just taking bits of paper, taping them, and then we're gonna take that on like that now. So that's gonna be the body. Okay. So you can see I am being quite messy with this. I am not being perfect. I'm not worrying about that. As I said, no matter what it looks like, it's gonna tell you a little bit about your puppet's personality. So it looks like already one arm's going to go up. So that says to me that this puppet is a waver. It's someone that likes to wave. It's a happy-go-lucky puppet. And finally, we're gonna take one more bit of paper. Let's rip one out. We're gonna give it one last roll, and this is going to be the leg. So, Tube paper in half. I'm just going to put a piece in the middle. There we go. Give that a rip. I think this has taken me two, three minutes to do. That is how simple it is. That is how quick it can be. And then finally, oh, where should we put the legs? Should we put them a bit higher up? Yeah, let's put them there. Just going to tape. That on and again you can see look how messy I am with the tape so I'm not worrying about being neat at all okay oh he's got one leg longer than the other so let's just shorten that one a little bit no scissors just ripping and here's our puppet okay he's gonna go for a little walk now oh look he is such a happy guy I can tell that okay what where are you going off to what you hungry like Augustus you gonna eat something <laughs> and then what you can do is you could keep building tape upon this. So that's essentially the base of Augustus there is something like this. And I kept building up the layers of paper and the layers of tape to make it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can decorate it as well. And again, you can just use things that you found around the house. So why don't we give this puppet here a nice little silver hairdo? You fancy a silver hairdo? Look, there we go. Oh, look. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, look at those silver locks, there we go. 
So you can use literally anything you've got around the house. Use your imaginations and bring those things to life. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna bring this little guy to life. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the puppet. Because if I look at the puppet, that's where my focus is. And whoever's watching me, so that's you at home, you're gonna wanna watch it as well. If I look away, you're not gonna wanna watch the puppet, okay? So I'm gonna watch the puppet. Now, the other thing I am gonna think about is breath. If I give it a little bit of breath, it looks like it is coming to life. And the other thing I want to think about is I don't wanna have a floppy hand. If I have a floppy hand, the puppet's gonna be floppy and it's gonna flop over. So I'm gonna think about these three things and I'm gonna start bringing this little guy to life. I think they've become friends. <laughs> building that's something you can try at home this holiday i remember when we were making those puppets when we were younger i wouldn't mind having a go again now back then we were making finger puppets and sock puppets you can make them really expressive by the way you move the puppet and the way you give them a voice okay, okay time, time to move, move on again. again this time we're sticking at beaton road and we're continuing with our Dear Santa project. And, and here's what your one got up to. Hi, my name is Lauren. I'm a learning and participation artist. I'm also an actor and a writer at the Hippodrome. Um, so what I love about theatre and drama is all the expression that you can have, the creativity and the silliness, which is the, my favourite bit about it. I specialise in Shakespeare and in writing, and I'd love to bring that to the school and to you all. Some of my acting has led me all across the UK, from London to Sheffield, all the way here in the Midlands. I've performed in festivals, I've been signed by an agency now, so it's really exciting times, and it's something I'm really, really passionate about. And I have been since I was about eight or nine years old, which could be your age, and I went to a youth theatre, and that's where I really learned that actually drama is something I really thrive in and I love. School wasn't always for me, but being creative and doing drama was, so hopefully that's something you can get involved in as well. So previously I worked at the Globe Theatre specialising in Shakespeare, and my favourite Shakespeare is A Midsummer Night's Dream. I love all the characters in there, the ensemble, it's really silly, and I'd love to be able to come and teach that to you all and get you involved in more Shakespeare. From sonnets to iambic pentameter, I'd love to have a go with you all and just be silly and get stuck right in. So it's my first time here at Starbank Beaton Road, so you probably haven't seen me around before, but I'm gonna be here all year, so hopefully we'll get a chance to work together soon. So with year one at the minute, we've been looking at Dear Santa. Dear Santa is a book and it's about all the presents that Santa might give to someone, but they're just not quite right until he finds the perfect one. And that's what year one have been looking at. We've created our own show, where they're all cheeky little elves. So here's a little snippet of what we've been working on. We Oh, I'm
So I hope you enjoyed that little snippet of our little show and that song and the dance and all the cheeky little elves. The show is coming up really, really soon. So hopefully to see you all there and it's invited to parents. I can't wait to meet you all. Welcome back everybody. This is iStar TV. Wow, well done year one. Awesome dancing and awesome singing. That was part of the Dear Santa project. Hmm, if I was Santa, I would get a present for my friends in school. And I would get them a friendship bracelet. Oh, I think they would love that. If I was Santa, ho, 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 I would buy my mum and dad a new car. My dad, Tesla, and my mum an Audi. Swish. Okay, if I was Santa, I would get a present for my mum, my dad, and my older sister. I would get them a new house. It would be a huge house with loads of bedrooms, room for guests, and a swimming pool in the back. Splash. Hmm. If I was Santa, I would get I would get Pokemon cards from my from my best friend Adam. Gold cards, black cards, silver cards, and EX. V stars are the most precious, valuable and bestest cards they're very gorgeous they cost like kind of like uh, like 100 pounds or maybe 200 sprinkled with presents okay time for the next feature we're back after star bank road and here's charlie with the year fives and they work on anglo-saxons and the special feature of shadow puppets it's our turn for head project and we, especially us, we are learning about silly sausages? No. Snakes? No. Oh! Angelo Saxon Heroes! Yeah. Today, we made some Anglo Saxon shadows. Yeah! So, we've been thinking about what it takes to be a Saxon hero. During our first week, what did we learn about? We learned about. Muscle. Strength! Yeah, strength. And what strength means. Last week we made what? Rowing oh. the boats. Yeah, so we learned about the long boats, didn't we? So in our song we've got What does it take to be a Saxon hero? Strength and courage. 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 So this week we are thinking about courage, okay? About the tactics that we need to be courageous, okay? So we use some shadows. We did a little bit of puppetry work because I love doing puppetry and we used those sneaking tactics and turned them into scenes. Can I see your treasure keepers? <laughs> to get it but you're going to use the lights you're going to use the shadows to help you build this scene so you can play around with how close the light comes so can you see what happens when the light gets closer take it, take it, take it further away, away. do you want to move the light up and down so, so there's lots of things you can play around with you guys okay can we give Ilias a lovely big round of applause Yeah, so have a little play around. How can you make those shapes on the
I hope you enjoyed those shadow puppets. But now we're leaving the world of puppets and we're welcoming some new schools to tell you all about the project. Here are your three from Starbank Road with a huge welcome to two schools who have linked up with Starbank. We'll let them tell you more. So here we go. Here's the feature! Let's go! Let's go! Welcome to Starbank School! Year 3 has been part of the Linking School project, which encourages friendship across cultural divides. We can't wait to come and visit you in your school. And we look forward to welcoming you to Starbank soon. In our school community, we speak over 20 different languages. And we love to welcome you in some of these languages. Ni hao in Mandarin. Assalamu alaikum in Urdu. Konnichiwa in Japanese. Haya in Somali. Bonjour in French. Mahaba in Arabic. Hola in Spanish. And finally, Guten Tag in German. So a huge welcome to Landywood and Little Sutton Primary. See you soon. And a huge welcome from us too to the two schools who are pairing with Starbank. Little Sutton Primary and Landy Wood School. Thanks everybody for sticking with us on the show. And now we've come to the end. It's always a sad moment to be at the end. But it's exciting because it's the holidays next. Woohoo! Whatever you're doing, have an amazing time. Have a Merry Christmas. And have a happy new year. Don't eat too many chocolates. And don't party too late. Easy on the mince pies. And careful on the portions of the Christmas pudding. Naughty but nice. For the very last part of the show, we're going back to the Black Country Museum. This is part two of our trip with year four. Enjoy the feature! This is iStar TV and we'll catch you back next year. Happy Holidays! So there was so much radio that and it was awesome. Which was your favourite radio? I don't know what their name was but the second one. And what was your favourite expression that he taught you? Awamia. 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 What can we see inside of it? In the middle? A spring. A spring, well done, it is a spring. You can hold it. Oh, you can make it work. As much as you can. Uh, you can pass that along as well. We stand on that so you can crush it. These two springs. We made DSA motorcycles in Birmingham. Mr. Cooper, which which motorcycle is the earliest? The earliest? Wow! That is a wonderful question. Okay, we're going all the way back to 1888. 1888, and it was made in Germany at a place called Konstadt, the first internal combustion engine used in a motorcycle. Well done, absolutely fantastic question. A great class, absolutely fantastic. Thank Fa you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Thank you. Travid. Bye bye. It has a very specific name, this does. It begins with a T. Ah, uh, a taser?
Not a taser, no. Yeah. It's called a truncheon. But it is like a wooden baton. It's what we would use to defend ourselves in case we came up against somebody who was uh, misbehaving quite a bit. They had a lead bar in them. You wouldn't want to get it by one of them because they could break bones. And cuffs. Have you ever arrested someone? Oh, I have. And I've had some that have resisted arrest as well, so we've had to be a little bit forceful with them. Here's an important question. How old am you? I'm 20 years old. You're 20 years old? Mm -hmm. I don't think you're... I think, is he telling the truth? Yeah. yeah. So how old is he? He's, he's eight. He's oh, he's 20. eight years old. Oh, now, here's the thing I can tell you. As an officer, I cannot arrest anyone under the age of eight. I'm nine. Well, if you were nine and I could prove the crime that you had committed that you knew was wrong and that you had done it knowing it was wrong, then I could arrest you. But otherwise, I couldn't. However, there is something I can do. I can take you by your ear, twist it around, drag you back to your parents, because you see the coppers knew everybody's parents, and I'd hand you over to your parents, tell them what you've done wrong, and it'll be your parents that would, that would then punish you. Yeah, you'll be in your parents' bad books. What so, do you think would be worse? In the police officer's bad books or your parents' bad books? Parents. Yeah. So you don't want to go misbehaving. <laughs> We're going to make a quick phone call. I'm about to call my mum. Hey mum, I'm having a great time at the Black Country Museum. My favourite part of the trip so far is about when they taught us how to make chains. I'm going to pass it on now. Somebody else wants to have a word. I'm about to call home. Mom, I had a great time at the museum. I want to stay here for the whole day. And my best part was um, when we got to the caving park. Catch you later. It's music I'm singing. It says it doesn't matter anymore. It's a baby again. It's like a romantic and a Caribbean song. It sounds like the old baby music. You and they used to go like that. The most fun activity to do is dance to music. You get your hands together like this, like this, and then you go bend down like you're about to have a squat, and then you slap your knees, you move your body forwards and backwards, like that. So that one, that's called the hand jive, and you circle those all together, and you do it like this, very nice, and you circle the um, what year is this in now? We're in 1959 in here. Oh. Very good year for music in here. What was the popular song? Popular songs. So in Stanton's, we made our own individual top 20 record list. Elvis Presley, Shirley Bassey, things like um, the Everly Brothers would have been all really popular records during this time period. <laughs> On the bus, please. All welcome. She got tickets. We got tickets. We got tickets. We got tickets. We got tickets.